Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Citrix ShareFile, secure file transfer built for business. Visit sharefile.com, click on the microphone, and enter TWIST for a free 30-day trial. And by InVision. Find out why so many hot startups are using InVision to prototype, present, and collaborate on design in real time. Sign up for a 90-day free trial today at InVisionApp.com slash TWIST. And by AWS Activate, the Amazon Web Services startup program. It's easy to start and scale your business with AWS. Visit aws.amazon.com slash activate. Hey, everybody. Today on This Week in Startups, Navdi, navdi navdi.com, they are creating a heads-up display, a projector that takes the information from your smartphone, say text, maybe uh, even video at some point, definitely turn-by-turn navigation, and projects it onto your windshield. That's right. They project what's on your phone onto your windshield, and then this keeps your eyes on the road because the chances of you having an accident are greatly increased when you don't look at the road, if you didn't know that already. This is an incredible technology. They did a huge Kickstarter on their own site, navdi.com, and they were part of the Highway 1 Accelerator, which is a special accelerator here in San Francisco and in Shenzhen, where companies build hardware go to China to go build it, and they do startup companies. So it's sort of like Y Combinator or Techstars, but specifically for hardware products. It's going to be an amazing episode, and it's an amazing technology that could save lives and could let you text while driving or not. Stick with us. It's a great episode. It's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis, and this is the show where we talk about changing the world through entrepreneurship and creating products that are important. And in 70% of the cases, they fail. Yes, that's right. Entrepreneurship, at its best, is a majority chance at failure. And the people who I have on the program have the gumption, the guts, the stomach to actually go in and fight against the odds. They know what they're asking for. And they go forward anyway to push the human species forward to become famous to build a team, and to build a product that they think deserves to exist. And to them, I salute them because I work with these people every day and I see them suffer to try to make something to make your lives better. You don't appreciate it half as much as you should. Pissed off at all you people. You just think like everything should be great. It's like that Louis C.K. thing. Oh my God, my, my phone is not fast enough. It's like... Go out there and buy every product that's on this show. That's what you should do. No, I kid, I kid. You should try every one, though. And if you can afford to buy it, buy it. Today on the program, you are going to see something that you're going to say 100% guaranteed, I want that. And when I see something that I know my audience is 100% certain to want to purchase, you know what I do? I invest in the company. No. Well, sometimes I do, actually. But anyway, I have them on the program. I just go to my Emmy Award-winning producer, Jackie, and I say, Emmy Award-winning producer, Jackie, given that you have four Emmy Awards, um, I think that this might be somebody good to have on the program. And then Emmy Award-winning producer, Jackie, books them. And so today on the program, Doug Simpson, who is the CEO and founder of Navdi, is going to join us to talk about his new product that you will want, uh, unless you... Don't drive a car. Uh, And in which case, you may or may, you actually probably want your driver. You're definitely going to want your Uber driver, your Lyft driver to have this. This is a mandatory device for them. Um, And I guarantee you 100% of them will have it. Hey, you know, we're taping here at WeWork in Golden, the WeWork Golden Gate uh, office in San Francisco. And I moved up here and I chose Golden Gate's uh, office for WeWork because this is where the future is going to be in San Francisco, this mid market area where Twitter is and Zendesk is. And they have a beautiful facility here that is sold out. So I don't know why I'm giving them a plug, but. Go to WeWork.com. They have offices around the world, and they're really a great team over there. And I have to say, this place has run so well. The team here that runs WeWork, Golden Gate, is just such a nice team. They're good people. All right, Doug, welcome to the program. You have a product called Navdi. I saw this. I jumped out of my seat because this is a product that I had 2% of in my beloved Corvette Canary Yellow C6 convertible that I loved. 
and nobody has ever advanced it or moved it forward until now. Explain to my audience what the NAVD is. Yeah, so NAVD is a head-up display that projects information from your phone and the car as a transparent image that appears to float outside of your windshield. So it appears to float, and so here I'm playing the video, we'll cut to the video, and so here's a dude in a Bentley, not a Tesla Model S, uh, but a Bentley, and he is driving, and he is looking, and there's a little projector, and the projector is sending his smartphone, I take it. Information from, yeah, the phone and the car, yeah. Information from the phone and the car is getting displayed on this little heads-up display so he can see through it to the road. Exactly. Now... Why isn't this already built into every car in the world? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, 2% of cars sold last year uh, were sold with a head-up display. They so, were. Yeah. Which so, is the leading car with it? Uh, probably BMW or, or, or possibly Audi. Um, okay. I think probably, you know, are, the, are the two best, but it's it's an expensive option. It's on limited number of cars. What does it cost as an option? Two um, grand, three grand, four grand? One, one, one to two. One to two. Uh, I think most typically. and But you don't get integration with your phone. Oh, no, so what are you getting? That. Speed and like RPM? You get speed. RPM. And if you buy the built-in nav solution, you get turn-by-turn directions ah, in it. some cases. But yeah, so uh, a much more limited version of, of what we're offering basically. And no touchless gestures, you know, none, none of that. Stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now you've built this device. I got it. I'm holding it up here for those people watching. Oh, is that you in the video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I am at the end. Oh, that's end. pretty funny. <laughs> Look at you. And so this, you made, this is like one of those great Kickstarter type Videos? Uh, is that what I'm looking at? Yeah, yeah. Well, so actually, we made that with sandwich sandwich video down in Santa Monica. Oh, okay. And, uh, sandwich Adam, video. Adam good plug. The, yeah. And so, what do they, they they charge twenty thirty times for that? Uh, it's uh, they're yeah they're reasonable considering the quality of their work. I think, but got uh, it. So yeah. that means it was more than thirty times. <laughs> That's thirty thousand dollars. I'm translating poker for you. Was it more than thirty or less than thirty? Um, it or was, about that. Uh, it was around there. Yeah. Around there. Okay, that yeah. means a little bit over. Maybe you're yeah. feeling a little embarrassed by the amount, but it had a huge impact, did it not? It did. It had a tremendous impact. It's been viewed over six hundred thousand times, and so if you spent uh, yeah. fifty thousand dollars all in on it and marketing it. That's a pretty decent uh, ROI if 600,000 people watch it. Now, did it drive actual orders? It does, yeah. Oh, it does drive orders. So we've had, yeah, the first week of pre-orders, we did a million dollars in pre-orders in seven days. So we're just blown away. Okay, so if you do a million dollars in pre-orders, that like basically funds the entire company. So even if you spent 50 or 100 grand on it, it's 5 or 10% to get that money, and it's a pretty easy thing to do. You probably would not have gotten anywhere near the amount that you got. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, so here's the device. I'm going to hold it up here. And uh, by the way, just a little disclaimer, if you happen to see the image in here, it, my cameras can't pick it up. So if you happen to see it, don't judge it by that and you judge it by the video that we're going to interlace in here. But it's a little projector, and I'm holding a prototype, to be clear. Yes. This is strictly a prototype. The, the, the launch version will look similar to this, but it will be much better. Exactly. Okay. So there's a little, what is this glass here? It's just a piece of plastic that flips up and down or is it glass? Yeah. No, it's it's plastic. It's polycarbonate plastic with some very special coatings that mm-hmm. uh, that make the magic happen. And then this is a little tiny uh, screen here or yes. a mirror? Uh, that's, oh, that's yeah. a mirror. You can think of it as almost like a mirror, but it's, yeah, it's a very special uh, special material that rejects uh, ambient sun- sunlight and magnifies the intensity of the light and does, does a bunch of... And I see it's backwards on here, obviously. Yes. So it's being projected backwards onto the this mirror type. Right. What is that? Ta- what did you say it was? It's a certain type of material? Yeah. Yeah. It's a special uh, special film that- uh, A film, yeah. Yeah. And none of that's proprietary. This is like standard stuff that's been around. Uh, it's, yeah, there's actually a lot of proprietary uh, things in the optical path. And, oh, there yeah, is. That's, yeah. That, that, that are custom um, that allowed us to create- a, an amazingly high quality image in a really small form factor. Because huh. when the automotive OEMs build it into the car, it takes up two to four liters of space inside the dashboard. So oh, wow. making it that small uh, was very difficult. And now it's going to Bluetooth connect to my phone or am I going to plug it in? Uh, Bluetooth to your phone. So yeah. I'm going to Bluetooth it into my phone and then it's going to project what resolution to here? Um, we actually don't talk about resolution because it's a projected image. And oh, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And so it's taking yeah. the full signal from my iPhone in landscape and putting it up there. Um, not exactly. So okay. basically, Great. we're sending information from your phone as data, and then you know we we have a full OS on the device itself, and we're actually running apps on that we've created oh. on this device. But what? we're just oh, wait. yeah. We're so just, there's a computer in here. There is. Yeah. Oh, like what? Like a Raspberry Pi type thing, or uh, how powerful? Uh, dual core. 
or ARM9. So oh, yeah, wow. pretty 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 beefy processor. So this uh, could there. run independent if you put an LTE chip in it eventually. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Oh, okay. So I'm going down the product roadmap. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump the yeah. fence there. All right. When we get back from <laughs> commercial break, I want to know how much it costs and what apps will be on it at launch and what you think the use cases will be and if it okay. will be legal for me to do text on this when we get back on This Week in Startups. Hey, everybody. Let me take a moment to tell you about Citrix ShareFile. It is a great professional service uh, that we use here at This Week in Startups and Launch to share important documents. And this is critical if you have things like term sheets and decks uh, for your startup, you know, all these kind of contracts that you need to maintain control over and keeping them secure is critical, especially when they're in the cloud. And Citrix ShareFile is super secure and you can see exactly who's accessing your documents and what rights and privileges they have on a very granular level, which we actually use. So some people who want to see the documents, there's some people who want to edit them, you get the idea. And we can just send a request to somebody, this is one of the best features that we use, we can send a request for somebody to send us a file and we know it's coming securely and they don't have to have a membership or anything. We just say, hey, here's a link. Give us the file. And it works out brilliantly. If you want to try ShareFile, you can do so with a very special offer. You're going to receive 30 days free, and there's no obligation. Go to ShareFile.com, click on the microphone button at the top of the homepage, and enter the code TWIST. Go ahead and visit ShareFile.com and use the promo code TWIST. It is a great product. We use it, uh, and it's really good for sending extremely large files, like video files we use it for all the time, actually. When we have uh, partners who we make videos for with the show, um, sometimes we have to send big HD 1080p files, and Citrix ShareFile is great for that. It's easy to use, and it works on all your mobile devices, and everything is super secure and under your control. It's a great, great product. Go ahead and try ShareFile by going to ShareFile.com and use using the promo code TWIST. All right, let's get back to this amazing program. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. It's me, Jason Calacanis, your host. Go to thisweekinstartups.com and see all of our wonderful high-res Wistia videos uh, and sign up for our email list there. Go to launch.co and you can find out about the events I host, including the Launch Festival and Launch Scale. Launch Scale is in October of 2014. And the Launch Festival is here in San Francisco, uh, March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th with a hackathon before it. 10,000 people will be coming, making us the largest startup conference in the world, hands down. Don't anybody email me and tell me some BS that you're larger than we are. You're not. We're the biggest. We're the best. You lose, we win. That's it. I'm on fire today. No, I'm just joking. Listen, it's a great conference. Come. And you can see great, great companies there uh, at the Launch Festival. And you go to launch.co. And oh, and by the way, you'll get a free ticket from me, Jason Calacanis, and my team. You get to come for free. I'm not buying you lunch. If you want to buy lunch, then you got to buy one of the better tickets. But just to come and sit in the audience... It'd be my guest. Come. Anyway, on the program today, Doug uh, Simpson, who is the CEO and founder of Navdi. And if this product was ready, you would have launched it on my stage, definitely, <laughs> because I am blown away by it. And when we left for commercial break, we were talking about the fact that this has a pretty good processor in it, right. that it's got this projection technology, and that it's going to cost $199, $299, $399, $499. at? Yeah, so we're open for pre-orders right now at just $299. Just $299? Just $299. That's too yeah. cheap. It is. I mean, are you losing yeah. money at two ninety nine? We're not losing money, but You're not uh, definitely money. technology this advanced should cost a lot more. Well, it feels like it's almost like a netbook. It's sort of like a smartphone, is it not? Uh, in a in a way, yeah. I mean, you could you could almost say there's a full you know um, Android tablet you know built into the product as right. well as you know advanced optics, and we have touchless gesture recognition as well, which has never been done before with a head up display ah. um, to our knowledge, and that's you know so a key let's part talk of the about experience. The, yeah, yeah, so let's talk about what actually is going to happen. My phone rings. Yes. I see an alert on my dashboard already, but I'm going to see who it is projected up here. And then instead of hitting the answer button on my Tesla in the screen, and that's the most advanced car in the world, I'm just going to what? Swipe by here to answer? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just so you'll swipe so left to answer. Swipe right have, to answer. Yeah. So you'll see the photo of the person calling slide in. You yep. swipe left to answer. You swipe right to dismiss if you don't want to take the call. And it's, it's and that done. natural. Yeah. And... The uh, let's get to what everybody really wants to do. Yeah. They want to read their text and they want to text people while they're driving. Right. And a lot of people have died texting and driving. Right. And in your video, you have texting. We do. Texting's illegal when you do it on a keypad. Right. Is texting legal when you do voice recognition or not? Or is that a blurry line and it depends on the municipality? Well, so, I mean, the, the yeah, I mean, there's nuances 
because the the law is different in every state. It's of different course. in every country. But in general, hands free texting is allowed. And right. the exact definition of hands free varies some. But yeah. So oh yeah, how does it vary? Um, well. Um, you know, it's basically defined by whether does hands-free mean you're touching a device and you can't touch the device, ah. you know, or is it based on whether it's a- actually able to be seen on a display or not? You ah. know, some sometimes it seems to wrap in, you know, that as part of the part of the definition. Oh, I see, I see. But um, yeah, so our, w- with our device, it's configurable, so the user can configure it based on what they're comfortable with, and and then as well, Got it. you know, based on the uh, complying with their local laws, sure. right? So in general, our you know our default. Uh, approach is text messages appear while the car is stationary mm-hmm. and then they can be read on the head-up display and then while the car is moving they're read aloud to you um, ah so you won't actually see the text message while driving at speed right correct you will see you will hear them read exactly and then when so you, you don't stop, want actually yeah. people you don't want people reading on these you want them glancing at it is that what you feel comfortable with yeah and then you know I mean but and, and then it's you know kind of um, looking at what's the importance of the information so something like your ah. turn by turn directions your speed that should always be there mm. and and in fact you know one of the things we've done is make sure your driving directions never disappear so you know it drives me crazy when I'm using a phone and I have my nav app running and a phone call comes in and the ah. navigation instructions disappear right because the app goes to the background, and sure. then I'm wondering where do I turn. And now and, you've got five clicks to get it back yeah, up and, and running. And right. And then I've got these that's these turn by turn directions talking over for the audio, right? Yeah. Talking over top of the conversation. It's the worst experience in the world. Right. So yeah, that's why Navdi will always show you the way. You always see your turn by turn directions, mm-hmm. even when a phone call comes in. So what amount of text is acceptable to glance at? I guess the word is read, but I don't to consume. And is there a standard for that? Um, there's there's not a standard per se. There's guidelines from okay, the National the guidelines. Highway yeah. Safety Administration. So you know they've they've done a lot of studied re- reviews reviewed you know a lot of studies that have uh, others have done. And you know the key factor related to distracted driving um, you know uh, as shown by some of the more recent studies is eyes on the road time. Mm-hmm. So we really want to maximize eyes on the road time. Um, so having a conversation. As a no, um, you know, there's an, there is not a statistically significant increase in the odds of having an accident if you're talking on the phone or listening to music. But the minute you take your eyes off the road to dial a number or that's when you know, these accidents yeah, happen. That's when bad things happen. And so, with Navdi yeah. or with my old uh, Corvette, you would be looking through the device. So when you're looking at the device, I can still see the road. Exactly. And one of the key things is that image is actually focused out in the distance. Mm -hmm. So then the road and the information stays within your field of view at the same time. So you can actually just look at the road. And because the information's in focus at a distance, um, then you can can read it. It looks like it's maybe 100 feet in front of you on the road. Yeah. And that's what it used to do in the Corvette, or it probably still does. Or when I would drive, I would see my speed up there. And I didn't, I could, I'm looking at the camera now, instead of going like this to see my speed and then coming back up, I would just see my speed. So I'd be holding it like this, like, so I'm looking in a camera right now for those people. I am looking at the speed right now through the device and this, it feels safe. But if I was to look down at my speed, I would be looking here on a car, which does not feel safe. Exactly. So do those systems, have, has there been any efficacy studies done on the systems in the Audi and the Corvette and everything on crashes? Did they go down? Uh, I haven't seen studies, uh, re- you know, yeah. designed, yeah, or yeah, measuring that. Um, but nobody's yeah, done them in a controlled, st- a controlled setting. There's, I mean, there's definitely uh, a lot of studies that have been done on the benefits of head-up display technology, and yeah, the increase in in safety, the in- increase in situational awareness, the hmm. increase in response time. So there's a lot of those both in the aviation industry ah. as well as in the automotive industry. Now, does is this how um, fighter pilots? When they have their helmets on and their goggles, is this how they view the world? They see everything in a heads-up display, or are they looking down at instrument panels? Yeah, um, so a lot of the the most critical information is is in a head-up display for fighter pilots, and but also for commercial airline pilots. So every commercial airplane has a head-up display, so the pilot can keep really? their eyes on the runway when they land the airplane. So. Where, where does that ha- happen? In a headset or? Um, it, it's actually a, uh, a lens that is in front of the of the windshield of the airplane. So it's a see-through ah. lens that they're they're able to look through. Oh, they do yeah. have those. Yeah. I've never seen yeah. that. 
oh, so they're actually looking through it and seeing wind speed and all that stuff as they come in yeah, and exactly. everything? Wow. Yeah, exactly. So then, yeah. So we're basically taking the technology pilots have had in commercial planes and putting it into cars. Exactly. Um, so when you decide you're going to go into this, how do you make the decision that you're going to do this? Because it seems like it's fraught with liability and debate and all this stuff. You know, did you think, my God, this is going to be too much trouble? Uh, or did you think... I could save lives. Yeah. No, I, it was it was one too many oh shit moments in the car, you know, myself. Ah. And, and, and and also just generally being frustrated with the experience of trying to use my phone in the car. And, you know, yeah. like the example I gave of my turn-by-turn -turn directions disappearing when a mm -hmm. phone call comes in. You know, and just being so frustrated with that, that that, that, you know, I just thought there has to be a better way. Nobody else seems to be doing it, so... I'm going to do it. Does it have passenger mode? Because that was one of the things about Waze I found very savvy was you could choose to be the passenger and get a different interface than the person driving. So does right. that have passenger mode or no? Uh, not not initially. That's one of the things we're, we're thinking about, though. Yeah. yeah. Because that's, I mean, there's a certain, also, it seems like with the Tesla, they don't have any rules about using that display. They just let you use it. I mean, you can use the browser while driving. They don't even ask you if you're the passenger yeah. What do you think of the Tesla display? I think Tesla's got to get into more accents because I know everybody who owns a Tesla is looking at that screen for the first couple of months. Right. They have a whole bunch of oh shh yeah. moments. Yeah. And then they stop looking at that screen. Right. Because that screen is too big. Yeah. I mean, our, you know, I uh, love the Tesla, but yeah, I mean, our general view is knobs and buttons and touch screens all force you to take your eyes off the road. Right. It doesn't matter where they are or how big and beautiful they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what about having something... So, so in reading, we didn't get an answer on that, the reading. The guideline, one word, two words, three words, when does it be go, go from a direction saying turn left to turn left at next intersection, which is four words, turn left at next intersection and, you know, slow down to 35 miles per hour? Like, is there a number of words yeah, they tell well, the navigation well, people to not go beyond? Yeah, it's uh, it's 120 characters, basically, is, huh. the, is the guideline. And yeah, and that's based on, you know, looking at how long does it take to read it and how long does it take to complete an individual task? And, you know, can you can you perform that task with, with, with small glances, you know, back and forth? So let's put aside all regulation. You've been working on this for how long? Uh, since October 2012. Okay. Yeah. So you got two and a half years under your belt. Right. Or two years under your belt coming up. So two years under your belt. What do you think the reasonable rule should be based on your experience and knowledge? Because in the real world, people are going to use text when they drive. You're not going to stop it. So... It seems to me that sitting there and saying nobody's going to text while driving is just completely naive. However, saying um, we'll allow texting, I'm wondering in your estimation, Doug, CEO and founder of Navdi, what should the rule be if we lived in Doug's country? Because you have an insight into this that I think few people have. Assuming we, you do believe that people are going to text and drive, right? Well, you, do you and, believe and, that behavior is going to stop magically at any time? No, and I mean, and, okay. and studies actually show that you know, unfortunately, all of the laws and all of the media are around the has uh, had no impact. Has had no impact. Zero yeah. impact, yeah. literally. Yeah. Right. So, and do you think any level of enforcement would have an impact if they impounded cars and phones and said, if you get caught texting while driving, we're going to impound your phone and car for a year, literally take them from you? Do you think that would make people stop even? Uh, I, I think it would have an impact, but I don't think it would stop be it. enough, right, to even eliminate Even that it. wouldn't, yeah, right? Right, yeah. See, I, this is what I think the law should be. If you're seen texting and driving on video, so what they should do is they just get cop cars and just drive down the road and capture people texting on video. If you're captured texting on video, your phone, you get pulled over and your phone, the phone itself is taken at that moment and you do not get it back. It's wiped and it's given to charity. Yeah, I think that might have a 10% impact at most. Right. You seem to agree. I agree. And and yeah, and I think so the alternative is provide people a way to do it safer. Got it. Yeah. So in your world, when we get back from this commercial break, I want you to explain what you think the rules should be. Stick with us. I am so excited to have InVision as a sponsor of This Week in Startups because it's a product I use every day. Literally, design is the most important thing 
that startups have to do today. And the second most important thing is scale their startup. So number one, you have to make a great product that looks good because we're in a very competitive design environment. The App Store and the folks at Apple are picking based on how beautifully designed your product is. How do you get beautiful design? I can tell you how you don't get it. You don't get it by dumping a bunch of screenshots into a chat room uh, or emailing people a bunch of PDFs. That's a sure way to waste everybody's time and to not get a great result. How you do get a great result is to put things in Envision app and have people get a link that gives them the actual app on their phone and the design of it and lets them click around and then post comments as to what could be better and seeing natively what your app looks like, the designs of your app that is, uh, in your phone is brilliant. And 300,000 designers are using it, including ones at Airbnb, Evernote, MTV, Adobe, Box, Zendesk, and a bunch of my portfolio companies are using it. They're not listed here. Uh, and I use it for inside.com. And I literally have designers sending me updates all the time. And I love posting comments on them. And then you can say, hey, this issue has been resolved or have a threaded discussion about really one small pixel of your designs for your 2.0 or 3.0. And it has made us at least five times faster. But more importantly, we don't lose discussions. And that's one of the things I find with these design discussions is you know what to do. Your team is smart. People bring up the right issues, but it gets lost in a chat room. This should not, you should not be having a chat room discussion, even though these chat rooms are very good for other types of discussions, it's not good for design. In design, you need to be putting very specific marks and notations on uh, the actual um, prototypes. So if you want to make beautiful, perfect prototypes and have unlimited screens, collaborators, and real-time comments, sketch commenting, and more, go visit envisionapp.com slash twist, envisionapp.com slash twist. It is a great, great product. I love it. And I thank them first and foremost for making a gorgeous product. And uh, we should all thank them for sponsoring an awesome show like This Week in Startups on Twitter by saying thank you at Envision App. If you say thank you at Envision App, on Twitter and just say, and just CC at Jason, my handle, I will retweet you. I will favor you. I will follow you. I will follow you to the end of the earth for using Envision because it's awesome. Okay, let's get back to the program. Enough about Envision. Come on. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis. Today on the program, I have Doug, who is the founder of NavD, which you can find at navd.com. That's spelled N-A-V-D-Y.com. Great name. And it's NavD Inc. on Twitter. $299 in pre-order for this wonderful device that I think is going to save lives, and it works with iPhone and Android, and it will be shipping in early 2015, when if you buy it at retail like a sucker, you will pay $499, so pre-order it now at navity.com. How's that for a commercial? All right, when I left our hero, Doug, I was asking him, what do you think, Doug? What should the rule be? We both agree, and all the listeners agree, we're not going to stop people from texting and driving. People are going to do it. So if we don't stop them, what should the rule be with devices like yours and even just projecting onto the screen on the Audi device? If you were, if we all lived in Dougville, what would the law at Dougville be? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, going back to the studies that show you're three times more likely to have an accident if your eyes are not on the road. But, you know, again, there's no statistical increase of the chances of an accident if, uh, as long as your eyes are on the, on the road, even if you're having a conversation, you're listening to music, et cetera. So going back to that, you know, if, if texting is done in a, in a way where your eyes are still on the road, then, you know, I, I think that should be allowed because it is it is a safer way to perform the activity that people are going to do anyway. So you would feel comfortable living in a world where everybody had a NAVD and was texting while driving? Yes. You would drive on that road? I would drive on that road and then, you know, provided replies to text messages or through voice because, you know, of course. Again, you can, yeah. yeah, you can keep your eyes on the road. So you have no problem with reading text and replying to them with voice? Right, correct. I, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement. Because what I've done now is, and I never do anything illegal in a vehicle. Let me just state that for disclosure um, and just disclaimer. But the times I've had to do something like a text, I love series voice activation. So right. even if I'm at a red light or a stop sign or stuck in dead stop traffic, I will hit the voice microphone and say, I'm running 20 minutes late. Start without me. Right. And then I press the send button. So it really doesn't require anything other than me. Uh, holding the phone up for a brief second to hit send. Yeah, and and you know, and we also know that there are, there there are uh, people that believe that you should not 
do any kind of text messaging mm-hmm. in any way while yeah. driving a car. And you can disable the text messages with an Navdi. So, right. you know, it, you can just use it for navigation, for speed, you know, and the information from your car, um, controlling your music, you know, and, and disable text messages altogether. All right. Now, let me take you to the next level. Okay. If I were driving and a sports score, score came up right. every 10 minutes, would you be okay driving in that world? No. I mean, I think- Okay, yeah. so sports right. score, you draw the line. Right. Every 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's uh, the the importance of the information matters and, uh, and also the frequency of the information matters. Got it. That's right? why I put so, in the 10 yeah. every 10 right. minutes or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So a heads-up display showing you the, sport, the score of the Nick game, no good, but the- Speed of the car, okay, and a text message, perhaps, okay. Right. And then you want, when the car is stopped, though, and yeah. you're sitting at a traffic light, you know, the great thing is your, your, your eyes are up, your eyes are on the road. You want to see some sports scores then. You can still see the traffic right, light while oh you're stationary. God. That's great. That is great. so genius. I have the best idea ever for this. I have an app I'm going to make for this. Okay. So with the SDK, that's software development kit, I believe, for those people listening, hmm. with, with your APIs, or whatever, dragon, whatever, can I have it pause and start a video based on speed? Um, well, not pause and you, you, yes, ba- based on whether you're stationary or not. Okay, you stationary yeah. or not. Right. Yeah. So literally, if I was in stop and go traffic, I could have the Nick game on, and when I stop on the four hundred five, and it literally stops for one full minute, the Nick game could play one minute. And I'm still seeing the road because I'm right. looking straight through. I'm seeing like a hologram of the Nick game, like a light version that's transparent. What, how transparent is it? 50%? Uh, translucent? You it, see through it? It's uh, 70%. Excellent. 70% yeah. translucent. Right. So you, you're not missing anything in the road. Right, yeah. Certainly not a car or a pedestrian. Right. So I'm watching Carmelo Anthony just hit shot after shot, layups, right. everything, crossover, the whole bit. Right. Dunking, great post-up game. Uh I would be able to consume stuck in traffic for an hour in LA, which happens. I'd probably be able to spend 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, the display is actually, which is a little unusual with head-up displays, the display quality is high enough that you can actually view videos on the display. And then, yeah, we haven't released an SDK or APIs yet, but that's coming. See, I think that um, there is a potential for abuse, right? Obviously. Right. And, uh, but... Net, 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 at the end of the day, eyes on road is the number one thing. So what somebody's got to do is run a legitimate test of NavD, of the Audi one, whatever, or of, you know, any other technology projecting. I would love to see a statistic of somebody having one drink, two drinks, one hit a pot, two hits a pot, watching a movie, texting, and reading the New York Times. Not at the same time, Jackie. <laughs> producer, Emmy Award winning producer Jackie's laughing at my scenarios. <laughs> so, uh, can you do a test where somebody's smoking a joint, having a drink, and watching the Knicks? No. But uh, yeah. what, do you, what do you think? What does your gut tell you? Somebody has a shot of tequila, takes a hit of pot, or watches the Knicks game for five minutes. Which one would you rather be driving behind? I'd pick watching the Knicks game. You would? Yeah. But it's legal to take a hit of pot or one shot of tequila and get behind the wheel. Yeah. Now, I think— uh, See, Now, that's fascinating right there because, I, you know, I'm in 100% agreement with you. There's right. people smoking uh, smoking weed and driving all the time. Right. And yeah. people are drinking one or two drinks, and it's legal. Yeah, and I think, you know, even driving while you're drowsy and you're tired— and, Absolutely. You know, I mean, is so dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. Now— um, you have this uh, swiping gesture here. What, what are the I, what are the things you could do with the swiping gesture? I mean, obviously, we have answered the phone call or not. Right, yeah. Reply to the text or not. But what right. else? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, we're starting out with very simple gestures, but over time, we'll you'll see us add some social signs. So if you ah. want to mute, you can mute like this. Sweet. If you want to confirm, you can confirm like this, right? Wow. So, so yeah. and for those of you listening right now while you're driving, uh, Doug just put, you know, the shh finger up to his lips, and he gave the thumbs up. And... You know, if I give like a uh, hang loose, what is that when I do the <laughs> like the thumb and the pinky out, like in Hawaii, the hang loose? <laughs> we haven't thought they about call, that. What do they call that? Shaka? Is that what Shaka? What do they call that? Yeah, you know. <laughs> what, what do you get with that? Yeah, we, we, we haven't worked no, on I, that. No one idea. Yet, but yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll so a thumbs up could be somebody. Could, yeah, could do that, and you could send it. Now, what about a Voxer like thing? You know, the app Voxer is really popular, right? And you do short audio 
instead of text. Yeah. Where I could push to, or I'm sorry, swipe to audio talk. Right. So I'm in a car, my wife's in the car, she's driving the kid home, I'm going to meet her at the restaurant, whatever. And I just said, swipe. And the microphone goes on and I say, hey, babe, running 10 late, swipe again to uh, stop it. And then it auto plays in her car without yeah. any permission. A- absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, Is that I, the killer app? I, 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 yeah, I'm a big, big fan of that. And we, yeah, we, we just think that that's, you know, rather than converting to text and back again and yeah, just, just. Vox are going to do that? Vox yeah. are going to do that or you're going to build that? Um, Who builds that? Well, well, you know, w- the initial set of functionality we're building ourselves. We want to nail the core use cases. We want to nail is that the a core use case? And then, you know, over time, yeah. we'll open it up to third parties. So, um, yeah, definitely it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's is that going to be in the one not, not on V one, but okay. uh, but yeah. Not so how do you? After. Let me ask you a question as an entrepreneur. You know, because everybody's platform crazy. Build a platform. Right. Don't build yeah. all the apps. Uh, but you have to have some set of apps. How do you balance that? Yeah, I mean, for for us, it's you know we looked at what are the what are the three most important things people do in the car, and it's communication, it's navigation, and it's music control. In, mm-hmm. in our opinion, so so we focused on those three things. You know, we focused on nailing the user experience and delivering that ourselves. Um, Got it. Okay. You know, for the most part. So your navigation turn by yeah. turn is going to be like um, projected out from Apple or uh, uh, from Google, Google Maps. Yeah. So the Google API has that. You can build it yourself. All right. And what about there's a plug on all cars made since whatever year that you can put to get data from it. I don't know if that's live data or not, but how do you get live data from the car to the device? Yeah, so the the, the port's called the OBD port. OBD port, uh, yeah. Yeah, the onboard diagnostic port. So that's in all cars from 96 and uh, and newer. Does that support live data? It does, yeah. And what technology does that use? Does it use Bluetooth or what? Um, It's, uh, well, you can can use Bluetooth, but yeah, the OBD port is, uh, you know, is kind of just... Oh, oh, right, right, yeah. The dongle you put has the Bluetooth, so so of course you can put anything on it. So you'll put Bluetooth low end energy on the dongle and feed it in here? Well, actually what we've done, so our, you know, our display is so bright that we need power from the car. You know, uh-huh. you can't, you can't just operate it off of a battery. Um, oh, it's got to be installed. It, 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 well, I mean, it's any, anybody can place this thing on the dash, so you don't need a professional installer, but we do need power from the car. So there's two, two ways we go about that. One is we can actually power the device off of the OBD port. Oh. And the nice thing about that is the OBD port tends to be on your left. So mm-hmm. then the cord goes is, up the left. Yeah, and it's out of your way. It's not dangling over top of your yeah. stereo. So we think that's you know you much, can get some sort cleaner. of loop hook or something you could put with the thing. And you yeah, can do something we'll, like that. And we'll supply that you know so cool. that it's, it, it, it's cleanly done. Or you can but, have it professionally done. I bet. Yeah, somebody could go under the dash or something. Definitely. And then you know the other option though, if, if your car is older than ninety six or you just don't want to do that for some reason, you can you know plug it into the twelve volt adapter or the cigarette lighter adapter. Got it. So we we support both. Ah, now what about? Um, since you have the data from the phone, right? In terms of speed and GPS location, um, you could get the speed from the phone, couldn't you? Or is that not accurate? Because when I look at when I look at Waze, it feels pretty accurate. Yeah, actually, typically, um, speed from GPS is more accurate than the speed what? from your car. Yeah. Why is that? I don't. I don't buy that. How is that possible? Um, I, I think it's probably there's probably an element of the the car companies, you know. Um, uh, intentionally show a lower speed than your actual speed. Oh, you know, really? Probably to you know mm. to to avoid any scenarios of the, of them being you know responsible for a speeding Interesting. ticket. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Oh, so they're a little conservative. Yeah, I've always found that fascinating. So now you did a Kickstarter with this, and then raised venture capital. You did venture capital, and then did a Kickstarter. Um, so we haven't announced uh, the fundraising that we've done um, in terms of the size of the round or who invested, but we actually did raise a round before the pre-order campaign. Oh yeah. Um, and then. So we, the, did the investors say to you, "Hey, do the um, did the investors want you to do the Kickstarter, or did they want to just fund it and not do the Kickstarter?" Uh, it, yeah, it was a, a very interesting. Actually, the majority were in favor of doing uh, uh-huh. the pre-order campaign, and the people who descended dissented. Why? Um, what was there? Well, I, I, I don't think anybody dissented, but I guess there were varying views on the importance of it. Ah, yeah, take so. me through it. Um, well, I mean, I, I, the only reason I bring it up is yeah. I'm having this discussion with a lot of people. I ha- I've okay. had resistance from founders who don't want to do it. Okay, I've had fa- I've had I've seen resistance from 
Uh, I, I'm a big fan of it. Okay. I've had I've seen resistance from investors who don't want to do it. Yeah. And I and they could never give me a good example, right. a good reason. Yeah. So what what do you think people's reasoning? Is? Well, so yeah, I guess the reasons I've heard for not doing it are you know some seem to think that it's not it's not a significant form of validation, which <laughs> I, I don't agree with. That's and, unbelievable. Yeah. The pebble, Ouya, and those stupid. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to say stupid. <laughs> the, the unique cooler with a blender right, on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, right. These are all incredible proof points. Yeah. Millions, tens of millions of dollars. Exactly. So I think, yeah, it's, I, you know, yeah, I, I certainly believe it's an incredible proof point. The feedback that you get um, is, is extremely valuable yeah. in terms of, yeah, what questions do you get? What do people care about? What features do they want to see? I mean, yeah, hearing from your early customers, right, is extremely valuable. Yeah. Um, and, you know. So you're totally stoked that you did it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Did you use Kicks? What did you use? Kicks? Sorry. Um, we actually did it on our own website. With what enabling technology? Um, so we worked with uh, Tilt, who used yes. to be called, called Crowd Tilt. So they, they they provided the platform, and then we you know we have a custom website using uh, using a, their yeah. technology. So take me through the pick. Why you pick that? Um, so yeah, so we we felt we wanted to be able to control the experience and customize the experience to make it to make it our own and to represent our brand. So that's why yep. we wanted to do it on our own website. And then we felt that you know Tilt allowed us the the freedom to do all the customization we want, mm -hmm. but all of the core functionality was there. It was tested. You know they they, they have a great uh, payment system. You know they've got a great. What do they get? Five percent, ten percent? What do they take? Um, they're or actually, is it a fee? They're that, what, just the standard payment processing fee that they're not. Marking up, so they're they're uh, they're at this point not, uh, as far as I know, uh, making anything off of it. You know, they're ah, just you know they're they're, they're, they're building it. their platform. I think they'll offer some premium services later. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. I think they're just going to charge people like fifty bucks for you know this level of campaign, a yeah. thousand bucks for this level of campaign, or whatever. But I love that tilt. Yeah, and let's uh, let's make a note of getting tilt on the program and or at launch scale, Jackie, because they would be a really good speaker potentially. Um, so in five years, where will Navity be? Yeah. I if think, you execute perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, you know, in the next five years, yeah, we, you know, we obviously hope to have millions of units uh, in, in cars and, uh, you know, working towards even the technology being embedded in, into new cars. I mean, we, you know, one of the things we looked at is the fact that in the U.S. there's 250 million cars already on the road, and then there's 15 million new cars sold a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't difficult to figure out, well, where do we want to focus first? We want to, we want to give people the ability to add this technology to the car they already have. And, yeah. You know, the average age is 11 years, but Eventually, we would love to work with the automotive OEMs. You know, once we built an app ecosystem, yep. and you know, we've really, really perfected the experience. And who are you up against? Um, so it's interesting. You know, in I, I mean, I think you know, really, our biggest competitor is just doing doing what you do today. You know, just yeah. taking your smartphone, sticking it on the windshield, right? So we do people we, do that? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, though people do have the yeah. high uh, iPhone thing up here. You're right. Right. And is that so legal, by the way? It, it, it well, it depends on again. You know, it kind of goes back to it depends yeah. on the state. But in California, no. In California, you you technically have to have it in the lower uh, five inches. A five inch corner ah. of your on the left of your windshield. Really? <laughs> and how many people have you seen place it there? Yeah, not many. Yeah. Are, are uh, the uh, Ubers and Lyfts and sidecars of the world uh, clamoring for this, or have you had discussions with them yet? Uh, we might have. Yeah. We're, that's uh, You're talking definitely... to a, like a very high stakes poker player right now. You, <laughs> if you answer me, I might. I just look at your eyes. I know. So you have talked to those kind of folks. I don't have any inside information myself, by the way. Um, but those kind of folks would be very interested in this because they want to be extra careful. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think, yeah, I think, you know, and obviously their uh, the, their customers want to see that, you know, safety matters. And, uh, yeah. you know, and yeah, I mean, sometimes I, yeah, you, you don't want to get in a car with multiple devices stuck all well, over the Well, that's what you already right? have right now, right? right. Yeah, yeah, you have somebody who has an Uber phone, their own phone, they, you know, whatever. Right. And they have a, and they have a navigation. I've seen people with three devices it's getting right. crazy. It looks like Japan now. Like, yeah. When you go to Tokyo, some people have, when I was actually in Tokyo, a lot of the taxi drivers actually had a TV running in the car watching sports. Right. Yeah. And they and that wasn't over data. I think they have like their own TV data spec out there, but it was pretty amazing. Right. Um, are there countries outside the U.S. that would be a better market than the U.S. that are less regulated and people might be able to do 
you know, when we talked about Doug's world, you know, yeah. Doug's world view of this. And what country do you think is most open and would be the best market for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I guess I'm not sure. I mean, I think all of them are, you know, are, are great candidates. And, you know, 30% of our orders have already come from outside, outside of the U.S. What and, was the biggest country outside of the U.S., um, Russia? No, it's... Germans. Uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty pretty distributed. Ah, um, so but, European and, English speaking, and I think it's also well English speaking, but the device is only lang uh, localized in English, you know. And we you know we tell customers yeah. that. So I think you know that's yeah. so it's an artificial distribution at the at the moment because the Germans are going to love this. Yeah, the Germans love this kind of stuff. This is going to be great. And you, I mean, you'll kill it in Germany. But I also think Russia and China. Did, is anybody doing anything like this with like you know like ganky products from? you know, China or like doing a product where you put your phone in and the phone reflects and pushes your phone out there? Well, yeah, there's a lot of that. And there, oh, do they there exist? Are, yeah. 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 There, there are that are, and there, did I you mean, buy a bunch of those and test them? Oh yeah. We bought everything. And there, there are some, I mean, the, the closest to this comes from Japan. So, oh, really? you know, so we we, we bought uh, the products that are, that are only sold in Japan right now. You know, that I think, uh, yeah, in Japan, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're very, very interested in robotics, and it seems you know there's kind of uh, early signs to us that they're very interested in head-up display technology as well. It would, yeah. I would think so, and I can see it now. I'm like, looking at some of the Japanese ones; it's pretty clever. Yeah, of course they're going to do this in Japan. It's yeah, total, total sense to project your TV and your phone. Of course, the Japanese would get to that before anybody. All right. Well, listen. Continued success with this, and you guys raised the seed round, right? Yes, we. That's did. announced. Yeah, uh, it's not announced actually. I, mean, I have they, it right they, here. They, well, the details of it are not a, not announced. You so. sure? Because it's on. It's in Crunchbase. Uh, it should, should I read out this information that was from uh, Jackie? Is it, can I confirm this information here is from? Yeah, turn the mic off, please. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jackie. Is this information from Crunchbase or did you get it from? It's literally in Crunchbase. Yes. All right. All right. It says Rubicon Venture Capital. Rubicon. It says Rubicon Venture. Maybe it's the wrong company. <laughs> Was the seed Mesa Plus? So yeah, so we do okay. we do have some seed investors. And, okay. Uh, and you so, went to Highway uh, One. We did went to Highway. Were you one. in the first class or second? We we're in the first class. Oh, okay. So you with yeah. Birdie. Uh, yes. So yes. Birdie's one of yeah. my investments. They yeah. did. Oh, nice. Really yeah, Mark's well. a great guy. Yeah, yeah, I think they're going to do. What do you think of that company? They're going to do well. Yeah, absolutely. So I Birdie. There was another company in there that I really liked. The U Lock company. You know the one with the lock. Oh, uh, Skylock. Skylock. What yeah. do you think of Skylock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. So also. you were in the first class of that. Right. Who's going to be the biggest company? Navity, Skylock, or Birdie? I, th I think we're all going to do well. <laughs> Tell us, the audience, before we wrap up here, what's what's Highway One like? Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it, that that was definitely one of the one of yeah. the best things we've done. That that was yeah a, okay. a really good move for us. Um, well, so the reason we went into Highway One is mm -hmm. because we wanted a long term relationship with PCH, given all of the capabilities Who's they PCH have. PCH and why should people care? Well, so yeah, they manage eight billion dollars a year in consumer electronics manufacturing. They work with Apple and Beats and Jawbone and a bunch of other companies. That, it would be yeah, PCH but, would be. Equivalent of like a Foxconn, they do manufacturing, contract manufacturing of electronic devices. They, they yeah, they do, and then yeah, fabrication, and, and molds. They, yeah, but they don't own their own factories, which is great because they have you know hundreds of factories they work with, so they're ah. able to select the best manufacturing partners that they have long term relationships with and manage the overall supply chain. They have retail relationships. And, and Highway they, One yeah. gives you fifty grand, a hundred grand for five percent or something. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah something like the Y Combinator. I think they've changed the the terms around a little bit. Yeah. Since then, but yeah, it's similar to that. So model you wind up then, giving five percent of your company for twenty five grand, which is pretty rich right. for them. Yeah. Did you feel it was a good deal for you? At yeah. The end of the day, a absolutely. Why? I mean, it. You know, it's. I, I'm. I think that early on, you shouldn't be too worried about the the percentage. You know, mm -hmm. that early on, and um, you know, it was a four month program. We spent two weeks in China. The relationship. Do they fly you out to China and everything? They, they pay do. for all that. Yeah, they pay oh. for all that, and they put you in a hotel. Yep. Or they have and a they, house they, out there or they something. They they put put you up in the Westin and. Uh, all right, look, I get this piece. Get, uh, Jack, Emmy Award winning producer Jackie. Can um you get me uh. I want to have lunch with whoever's running this uh, Highway 1. Who's running that? Uh, so Brady Forrest runs uh, Highway 1. All right. Bring Brady Forrest to me. All right. I, I want him on this program as quick as possible because now there's three companies I'm super impressed with. Yeah. And then my understanding is they will give you a another equity round. So they'll, they'll give you a convertible note or they'll convert the cost of 
firing up your manufacturing at a very high valuation, right? Or a decent yeah. Yeah. valuation. Yeah, to set up your supply chain. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, they have a billion dollar credit line with right. the factories they work with. So you, you get to leverage that. Right. And They'll basically yeah. build it and give you 30 days or something. Right. So they basically take out the three main pain points. One is like figuring out the contracting. Two is managing the, the managing of it yeah. and that's cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and they'll just convert that into equity yeah and then they'll also float your first product run for 30 days or something right and then they've got the retail relationships since they're so pay, that's four like they're, things they're placing high you know volume products like beats into retail so right wow. so so they have um, the, they they know the best buys and the walmarts yeah, and whatever and then if they're managing both ends of the supply chain they can Im, 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 engineer inventory out and you know it just takes wow. a huge amount of the risk so they'll take they'll wind up owning 10 percent of your company or something like that at the end but they'll if you take that second note or something but it's a pretty good deal yeah absolutely i mean a smart move on their yeah. part man yeah it's a great company, and, and Liam that you know started the company. He's an entre entrepreneur. He loves entrepreneurs. You know, this, yeah. he's very passionate about uh, what such they're doing a good with idea. Startups. I have to say, like I'm. I mean, I don't mean to compare things, but right now, you know, like the three companies I've seen. Well, I mean, I've, I I reached out to you because I also wanted to invest in the company, but it looks like that train's left the station. But you know, Birdie and also um, the Lock. I like both. All three companies, I think, are destined to do great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No. And it was. Yeah. It was fantastic being involved in the program for four months with those companies. And yeah, you know, we helped each other. You've raised the most out of all of them. You've you've got the most demonstrable success in terms of the Kickstarter as well. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So You're 10x everybody else. Everybody else did like a hundred thousand dollar Kickstarter. Did anybody else in that class really shine? Um, so I, I don't know if they've announced the order value, but mm. but Ringley also had a very successful. Oh, Ringley, yes, um, sure. The Ring pre-order campaign. Ring. Let's make yeah. a note about Ringley as well. Yeah. Let's get Ringley on the program, uh, Jackie, or at least uh, I need to meet with them at some point and check them out. All right, listen, this has been amazing. Everybody follow Doug Simp or Doug's Imp. <laughs> Doug S Imp. Doug Simp. <laughs> Whatever is memorable. Do you simp? <laughs> D-O-U-G-S-I-M-P on the Twitter. You can follow me. I'm at Jason. And go to navd.com right now. Is it too late to pre-order? It's not too late. We All actually, right. it, we, you know, this the response has been amazing, so we extended it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I, I would pre-order, but I'm going to get a demo unit because, you know, that's what's great about having your own show. Uh, and no, I'll, I'll pre-order. I'll pre-order myself. But go pre-order for two ninety nine. What a deal. And then four ninety nine. you think, is going to be the retail yeah. price. Yeah, I mean, based on the volume we're seeing now, we may be able to bring it down, but mm. uh, yeah. How many, what do you, what do, you do, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 in your first production run? What, what, how many thousands of these do you make? Um, well, it, yeah, you know, we'll see what the demand is, but mm. we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're already into the thousands. And, wow. Uh, yeah. It's, and it's some people will pre-order and pay. Do, do the people who, pre when people buy it from you, like if Walmart buys a thousand of them, do they actually give you the cash when they buy them or do they make you float them? How does that work? Like if Target or some automotive uh, shop was going to do it or Sharper Image or something? Well, yeah. I mean, if it was, yeah, outside of the pre-order campaign and, you know, you, that's what you're asking, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you got to negotiate the terms of when they pay. And, but yeah, they're usually not pretty, but- uh, What would know, they I normally think, be, you think? Um, you know, prob probably, you know, they would pay something like 45 days after they've actually sold the product. So it's- yeah. After they've sold it. Yeah. So you're floating somebody as big as Walmart or whoever. Right. Right. That makes no sense to me. Why don't they just pay you something up front yeah. when they know you're a startup? Yeah, and then, you know, yeah. I mean, PCH is also uh, solving that problem. And, you know, mm -hmm. they've announced a, an amazing deal with uh, Radio Shack where oh. Highway 1 companies get placement into all their stores and it's very favorable terms and, you know, it's 15-day payment I'm terms. rooting for Radio right, Shack. So. It was funny. I was like, if they wanted to do something smart with all these Radio Shack stores, which are kind of empty, right. they should just take the back of the store and put five workbenches and let anybody come work there if they spend $100 a month. Right. So if you spend, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you give them $100 a month, you can work at one of the benches for up to X number of hours per month. Uh, and that's it. So it'd be like a shared office work space for, you know, people to come and hack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. They wound up doing some of them. They're testing it. All right, listen, uh, this has been a great show. And uh, follow at TWI Startups. That's as in This Week in Startups. TWI Startups on the Twitter and on Facebook. And we don't really use the Facebook because why would we do that? Uh, but we do to use the Instagram. And thank you again to WeWork and my entire team at This Week in Startups and Launch. Uh, go to launch.co and navity.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.